If you're prepping for the MCAT, I think step one is go get that document yourself. Ali back for some more MCAT podcast. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. I love these talks. I'm excited to continue our MCAT 101 series talking about a very common question. Mm -hmm. Do I need a prep course? Do I need a tutor? What is the best way to prepare for this dreaded thing called the MCAT? Now, We'll we'll add in a caveat, right? You may be a little biased. You work yes. for a test prep company. I do. So so let's try to put that aside a little bit. And and mm -hmm. we've had great conversations over the years, right? I've, I've been doing the MCAT podcast now for <laughs> for many years uh, with Blueprint MCAT. Um, one of the best ways, way back when we started with Brian, way back in the day, his his advice was one of the best ways to study for the MCAT is to find three other people and make a study group and find one person for each section of the test where that is their strength. What do you think about that? I, I like this idea because this is how I actually studied. I studied with, I couldn't find four people. I found like three people or two people in, in, in addition to myself. And I think it's good to have a group of people around you to push you to study better. And, uh, a group of people where your strengths and weaknesses do not match up. This way you're helping each other. And one aspect in here, I, I hear this from students a lot, like students who want to study on their own. If I'm already good at physics, why should I waste my time to teach physics to other students? Mm -hmm. And my answer, and I think the truth is, you get much better at things when you start, once you start teaching them. Yeah. Uh, once I started teaching for the MCAT, I got much better at the MCAT. Like uh, I did well on the MCAT the first time I took it, but I did much better once I started teaching for the MCAT and tutoring for the MCAT. Mm. Uh, it makes a huge difference to not only do, know the material, but know it enough to communicate to someone who doesn't know it as well. Yeah. So I like the idea of having a group where for the motivation and for the like the communication, it just it makes things much better. Yeah. So a study group, free, typically, right? Uh, yes. You can go find people locally to you or or now with uh, the, the Zoom world that we live in during this pandemic. You can yeah. find people anywhere. Yeah. The next question will come, well, what set of material do we use to learn the content? There's Berkeley and Princeton and Kaplan and Blueprint, and everyone has a set of books out there. Which one is better? Oh, that's that's <laughs> one loaded question. Well, I like our Blueprint material better, uh, so I definitely recommend it. But honestly, like if if I'm 100% on, it does not really matter where you get the books as long as you use one set of books. Yeah. So reading the blueprint books the kaplan books the berkeley review books for the same material in three different ways does not really help the content is the content some of we've known some of this like some of the physics for a few hundred years now so it did <laughs> not change much for you to read it from three sources mm -hmm. so if you're using multiple sources use multiple sources to practice but whatever books you have access to use them and yeah. that's it what what about let let's say I'm taking the test in 2023, right? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll use 2022, right? We're in 2021 yeah. now. Let's let's use 2022. Can I use books from 2020? That's a very common question. Is oh my my roommate, my neighbor, they have books from when they took the MCAT a year or two ago. Is that okay? Or has physics changed in those two years? And, and am I going to be screwed? Uh. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead and use the books. I think uh, test prep companies always update their books because they, um, the way they approach the content for the MCAT, they add maybe better questions or better exercises. Yeah. But the changes to the content itself are very small. Like if you have books from 2014, I definitely go ahead and say like toss them away and get a new set of books just because the MCAT changed in 2015. Yeah. Um, but if you have a set of books from 2015 all the way to today, I think it's, it's very valid to use them. Yeah. 
The the next biggest question, or actually be- before we jump into another big question, let, let's talk about the logic behind why any set of books works. So just to, so students know, it's not like test prep companies are out there just making up whatever they want to put in the book, <laughs> right? It's it's not they're, they're not guessing. What's what's going to be on the MCAT? Let's make books about it, right? The double AMC provides everyone, including you, if you want to just go Google it, yeah. provides documents on what is expected to be known for the MCAT. And then each of the test prep companies go through that outline and then create their books. Yes. All right. So the so, books should teach you what you need to know no matter who it is. That's that's very true. Yeah. So and if if you're prepping for the MCAT, I think step one is go get that document yourself and look at what are the, what are the things that are tested on the MCAT. Just all you have to do is Google AMC, what's on the MCAT, go download that PDF. Yep. Uh, and this is always going to be step one to start your MCAT prep experience. Yeah, step one. <laughs> yeah. Step one, go learn what's on the MCAT directly <laughs> yeah. from the source, which is great. Yeah. All right, so study groups are great. Any set of books are great. If it's a year, two, or three maybe old, great. Not a big problem. What about the student who is maybe lacking some confidence and is mm-hmm. looking at a course because they want maybe the content delivered not in book form but maybe in video form or they want access to a teacher, an instructor like yourself through the Blueprint Live Online course where where they can show up and, and maybe there's a little bit of accountability there because someone yeah. is, is expecting them there, but then they have someone that they can like reach out and talk to, an expert and not just Sally from down the hall in the study group. <laughs> yeah, I think it makes a whole ton of difference for students who need the structure to study for the MCAT. So if you started your prep or you've already taken the MCAT, you wake up every day, you don't know where to start. You don't know what to do every day. Um, You have access to a lot of free resources or books, but you don't know the proper combination of reading content and doing practice questions, or you just need sources for practice questions. I think test prep companies do a good job, or specifically us, we do a great job at providing you with all that. Structure first, I think this is the main thing you're getting from the test prep company. A structure that tells you that if you follow this recipe that we tested on, or we know worked for hundreds of students, then or thousands of students, then trust that and start with it. And you have people to help you adjust your schedule and adjust your approach if things are not working perfectly for you. Yeah. I think it's it's at the end of the day, the the word I've been using a ton or the, the phrase I've been using a ton lately is self-awareness, right? And self-reflection. Yeah. Know yourself and know what you are going to need, right? For me personally, just some personal stuff, right? Uh, I used to be a personal trainer, right? I went to, to undergrad. I was an exercise physiology major. I was a personal trainer uh, in undergrad and in, in between undergrad and medical school. And even during medical school, I still worked as a personal trainer at the local gym. Uh, and and during COVID, my exercise routine tanked and I wasn't exercising at all and I ate whatever I wanted. And I hired a trainer recently because I need that accountability to show up. I knew that come six o'clock in the morning when I needed to work out because if I don't work out in the morning, I just won't work out, period, because I know myself, right? I I know myself, and maybe this excuse, whatever, but if I don't have someone waiting for me at six o'clock in the morning on the other end of that computer screen because it's a a virtual trainer, um, if I don't have that person there, I'm not going to wake up. I'm going to sleep through my alarm, and I'm just like, I don't feel like it today. Or I'll wake up and I just won't push myself and I just will will be on TikTok the whole time I'm supposed to be exercising, right? And it's that self-awareness, self-reflection that every student needs to have. Not everyone needs test prep, right? Well, everyone needs test prep. Not everyone needs a formal course or a tutor or whatever, right? And and it's good, right? You representing Blueprint MCAT, that this huge test prep company that helps thousands of students um, with with their MCAT prep, 
you're saying not everyone needs us and that's great <laughs> right yeah if so you, if you have the skills and the and the discipline to do it on your own like go do it yeah. on your own yeah and we have free resources to help you do it on your own like an amazing yeah. study planner tool yeah yeah i think if you're studying on your own, then take what you can get for free from all of the companies. Uh, so like us, we the study planner tool, uh, if you're on the fence, you want to see like um, if you if you prefer studying from the books or you prefer from studying from videos or like a guided practice with videos, you can, again, do a free account and then check our modules to see if, if this is the, the resource for you to learn better. Mm -hmm. Um, and one side note in here is uh, test prep gets the get the rep of uh, students who are not doing well need test prep. Students who are doing well don't. I know that when I was in undergrad and I was thinking about test prep, I lived abroad. We didn't have test prep over there. I wanted to come stay with my like family here in the U.S. to take test prep and. My parents were just like, why do you need test prep? Just like <laughs> I thought students who are failing, only students who fail need test prep. But yeah. that's not the case. Like I had student, I had a student who scored 528 on their test. And then <laughs> like going in and they're working for a competing company now, but <laughs> they uh they got a 528 on their test. They're excellent students, 4.0 students did the kind of well like on from the get-go before they started studying they did well on the diagnostic test but mm -hmm. they realized and to follow up on your point self-awareness that for me to excel i need the structure of and people around me to help me with it yeah and then they they took a test prep course yeah some people use it as a security blanket like they're they're yeah. good already and they just want a little extra reassurance some people need it so, like Everyone is different, and that's where this self-reflection, self-awareness comes in. What do you need? At the end of the day, and, and, and we did this in another MCAT 101 episode, at the end of the day, for really solid prep, practice tests come, come into play, right? That's at the, at the core, you need uh, the AAMC material uh, at a bare sure. minimum, which yeah. includes the, the four score tests and the one unscored test. Yeah. Uh, this is the part where if you're studying on your own without a course, you want to find a way to get practice tests. And you could do, you can, you can just go do like a free account with Blueprint and get like the, the diagnostic and one full length exam plus the, the five available AMC exams. But I think that's not enough. Like you might go and to like some books you buy on the market have practice tests, like uh, a code for practice tests in them. Uh, you can get one practice test from each company if you want. Uh, but you definitely need practice tests beyond the AMC just because there's only four scored ones and five total. Yeah, and, and remind people for those who haven't listened to the the MCAT 101 series about full-length exams, how many full-lengths do you typically recommend students take? Yeah, as many as you can within the time frame that you have, but I'm going to say a minimum of like seven to eight full-length exams. I know Blueprint, we say six to eight is the minimum, but that's for students who are doing really well. Yeah. So I'm going to say for if you're my tutoring students from day one, I tell them we're aiming for a minimum of eight. Okay. That's eight exams. So, yeah. and, and that's not eight exams in a week, right? A <laughs> big mistake yeah. that students make is just cramming them all together at the end and not learning from each exam. Uh, just just showing up and taking exams doesn't actually make you better on the MCAT, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. I wish it were that easy. Okay. Um, at what point, and maybe again, it's a, a self-reflection kind of answer, at what point does do the scales tip from I need a course to I need a tutor? That's that's a good question. So if you look at if th there are two types of students, uh, I think who will need a tutor. One, I have some content deficiencies that I need someone to sit with me and walk me through it. 
Uh, and two is like, even the structure of the course is not enough for me. I need more accountability. I need more communication with the tutor, like someone to just say, do this for the next week. And then let's talk about them uh, in person, one-on-one, -on -one, then this is tutoring is for you. Um, you might walk in into your MCAT test prep knowing what kind of student you are. Mm -hmm. um, and knowing from day one, I need a tutor and registered for a tutoring service, hopefully our tutoring service. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's, we have a lot of students who go through the course and halfway through say, okay, I need the extra help. It yeah. might be that I need someone to sit for me for a couple of hours and hammer in content. Mm. Or it could be that I need a, someone to hold my hand while I'm reviewing the a few passages, work them together. Uh, go back and forth, like explain my thought process and have someone diagnose exactly what's going wrong with it mm -hmm. uh, so that I can change the way I think about that. Yeah. How often have you seen where students understand the content, right? You're, you're talking to them. They can verbalize everything. But interpreting that or, or applying that rather to the MCAT for some reason they just don't understand how the question is being asked. They don't understand how the answers are being presented to them. And they just don't get the right answer. Does tutoring help maybe more with that kind of student? Yeah, yeah. And and just to talk, this is a frustrating process when you know you understand the material. Yeah. Like when I started studying for the MCAT, I was a physics tutor. And I thought that, well, the campus section, at least the old version of it, 50% physics, I'm going to get 50% of these. These are guaranteed points. But no, they weren't. The MCAT tests things in a different way. And I really struggled with like even my biggest strength going into the MCAT. Um, so I've, I've had students who are like experts in the field. Like I currently have a student who is a chemical engineer. And looking at the campus section from like, uh, the perspective of the MCAT could be challenging and just like talking about every question and the logic that you need to follow to to answer the question makes a huge difference because sometimes like you need something small to click and then you're all set yeah. you're all set with like an entire like segment of the MCAT yeah is there anything else we haven't talked about in terms of preparing for the MCAT, right? We talked about study groups, free, easy, um, yeah. use the people around you or, or virtually um, to help you prepare, uh, books, practice tests, courses, tutoring. What else are we not thinking about um, when it comes to MCAT preparation? Yeah, I think we, we did touch on it a bit, but if you're starting, the AMC website has a lot of information that's useful. Yeah. So it's I think it's not organized very well. The double AMC yeah. website needs needs an overhaul. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's it's very hard to find things. But once you find them, the information is very useful. Yeah. Um I think they also detail some like if you are thinking about self prepping, if you're if you're thinking about prepping from like on your own without the help and structure of a test prep company, the AMC website gives you like lists some free resources. Unfortunately, the AMC resources themselves are not free. You still need to pay for these. Yeah. Um, but start with that AMC website. You can. If for extra help, like step two is go to something like a blueprint website, make a free account and see what resources are available there. Yeah. All right. Another MCAT 101 in the books. If this is the first MCAT 101 you're catching, go back and, and listen and watch all of the other ones to really give you a good foundation of what the MCAT is and what to expect uh, leading up to and on your test day.